Hi, and welcome to section 2.3 on our, uh, in our unit on matter. We're going to talk today about physical and chemical properties. Here I have a picture of some students who all have different physical properties, and I listed a few uh, examples of different physical properties right there, blonde hair, color of eyes, short, thin, tall, muscular, I'm sure you could think of a few others. Those are just uh, examples of physical properties. Probably when we're talking about people or things we're observing um, on, a, on a large scale like that, we would talk about characteristics. But in chemistry, we say properties when we're talking about substances. So here are some physical properties of different substances. And you'll remember from the last section, we talked about the different states of matter. And those different states, solid, liquid, gas, are definitely examples of physical properties, as well as odor, volume, color. Those are all describing the physical property of our substance. Boiling point is a physical property, and that is the temperature at which the substance achieves a boil. And here is our melting point. That's the temperature at which uh, a solid substance will melt and change state into a liquid. Density is another physical property. And you can see here that this substance is less dense than this substance. If these little dots represent atoms or molecules, there are fewer of them per volume in this cylinder than here. So this one is less dense, but density is also a physical property. So what about physical changes? We, um, now that you know what some physical properties are, what happens when we have a physical change? Let's look at the example of water. Here we have our water molecule as we've been representing it. The uh, blue, large blue circle is oxygen, and then the smaller yellow circles are hydrogen. But more often you will see water represented this way in chemistry. We have O representing the oxygen atom, and each of the H's, capital H's, represent a hydrogen atom. And then these black lines between them are the bonds. So if we start with a solid, um, some solid water, which is called ice, right? Uh, and we heat that up, we can see a physical change as the ice melts and uh, we get liquid water. Then we see another physical change. If we continue to heat this water up, uh, we will get some steam coming off and the water molecules will then be in a gas phase, um, in, in the gas state. So we have one physical change here and one more physical change here being represented. What is interesting about this? And what it, I really want to stress here is that the water molecules are still intact. When we are right here, we see the ice, we still see that water molecule, that oxygen and the two hydrogens, they are intact. In this liquid state, when it goes from the solid to the liquid, the molecule is still intact. We still see the oxygen and the two hydrogens, they're still intact. Then as we go from the liquid state to the gas state, that water molecule is still intact. That constitutes a physical change when the molecule remains intact. Here are some more examples of physical changes just to help you get your uh, mind around this. Here is a cucumber undergoing a physical change. It is having its shape changed, but the cucumber itself is still intact. Here we have a paper being folded. Again, the paper is still intact. It's just changing its shape. Um, here, the paper is being painted on, but the paper itself is still intact. Here we have a, uh, some different ingredients being mixed together. The ingredients are still intact. They have not changed, so it is a physical change. So, now that you understand about physical properties, let's take a look at some chemical properties. And we are going to look at a chemical change in order to understand this, but 
chemical properties happen when a substance changes to form a new substance. So it's a totally new substance that we're going to, going to get from a chemical change, as opposed to the physical change where our substances are still intact. So here is the, an example of a chemical change, the electrolysis of water. And there's a picture of it right here. Electrolysis of water is basically just decomposition of the water by an electric current. We're running an electric current through the water and we are getting some products. We're getting oxygen and we're getting some hydrogen in, in gas form that are forming. So here is a little diagram representing that. We have our water molecules. When we run the electric current through two water molecules, we get a diatomic oxygen and two di diatomic hydrogen molecules. And obviously we're starting with this over here and we're ending with these over here, very different. They are completely different substances. So this is a chemical change because the substance is changing to form a completely different substance or substances in this case. We're getting two substances that are formed. So another interesting thing to note for the future is that a chemical change is also called a reaction. And we will be dealing with that a lot this year in chemistry. Here are some examples of chemical changes. We have wood burning. Obviously, we start with wood, we end up with ash, very different substance. Um, here is an example, steel rusting. The steel initially is very different from rusty steel. It is not the same substance. Cookies baking, I think you probably know that if you take a bite of a cookie before it's baked and after it's baked, there is definitely a chemical change that happened. Um, food digesting in our stomachs, when that watermelon goes into our stomach, um, there are enzymes that carry on a chemical reaction and break down that watermelon so that it is no longer the same as it was when it went into our mouth. So these are all just examples of chemical changes. Advanced proficiency. You might not like what I'm doing here, but I'm going to ask you to be creative. Think of ways that you could go above and beyond and surprise me with something really fantastic and exciting that you look into. So thanks. We'll see you in class.